thank you very much for having me here. Two fascinating um, talks there. Um, one just blew me away in terms of uh, digital democracy and what is possible, and the other, well, academic research. I'm, f I'm suddenly feeling very inadequate because I want to get really practical with you and I want to talk about kind of nitty gritty stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and I want to see what we can get done in only 10 minutes. I want to look at 12 practical ways we can become more user-centric in the work that we do day by day. You see, digital has changed the world. We all know that. We know quite how profound the change has been, don't we? That people are demanding ever more. That our behavior has altered. And that we, that's because we be, we've got more choice than we've ever before, uh, before. We're exposed to more than we've ever before. And we expect instant communication, don't we? We expect instant communication with our friends, with our family, but most of all with other organizations. We don't want to wait. We don't want to spend our time faffing around with organizations. And because digital has profoundly changed us, changed the way we think, changed our expectations, then we as organizations, whatever organization we represent, needs to behave differently. In such a world, how do we meet these new expectations? How do we get better at listening to people and responding to their needs? It's quite a profound question that we have to answer. So I want to share with you just 12 practical steps of how we do that. Number one, we need to consolidate what we know. The first step in listening and responding to the needs of citizens is to understand them better. The chances are that there is a lot of information across your various departments, across the institutions as a whole, about users, about our citizens. Research that's been done before, but has ended up in a drawer somewhere. All that effort, all that knowledge. And then, of course, there's the experience of people that are interacting with citizens on a daily basis. The, the problem is that these are like pockets of information. They're kind of scattered and spread across the institution and organizations, and we need to start bringing them together to create a central picture of what today's citizen is like. Because what we think we know is no longer the truth. Just the makeup of this audience perfectly demonstrates that we are not representative of the complexity and diversity of the people we're trying to reach. And then we're going to need to start filling in the gaps. Because we're not going to have all of the information we need. We're not going to have a complete picture. And the trouble is, is that we have this tendency when we, we work in the digital field, we work with technology, that we sit in our little bubbles and we don't actually have a lot of interaction with real citizens, with real people that are actually using our services. And as we heard in the, um, this morning's talk, we need to actually go and spend time with these people. We need to interact with them and get to know them. Now, when there's a lot of user groups, that can be very hard to do. It can feel very intimidating. We can't talk to all of these different users. Our users are too diverse. But here's the, the key. Talking to somebody is better than talking to nobody. Too often we sit isolated because we're overwhelmed by the task. Get out there. Start talking to people who are using the services you're interacting with. Start learning from them. And beyond that, we need to widen that sample with data. You will get valuable stories. You will start to empathize with people as you talk to them personally, but that's not going to be enough. You're also going to want to gather data, gather data like we've just heard about. But I would advise you that when you start thinking in terms of data, that you, you go in with specific questions that you want answered. Because so often we look at things like analytics and reports and, and big data and that kind of stuff, and we're just overwhelmed. And we end up looking at vanity metrics, right? How, what our bounce rate was or how many visits we had to our website. 
And those don't really tell you much about users. So go in with specific questions. Use data to drill into those questions. Now, it's easy to become overwhelmed with all this information. And, and the truth is that even if you get this really good picture of users, even if you get to really understand the people you're trying to reach, nobody's going to be interested. Nobody's going to look at this huge amount of information. So we need to take the time to start simplifying down those messages. If we want the whole organization to start thinking in a more user-centric way, to become more citizen-focused, then we need to start presenting this information in a much more compelling way. We need to use tools like customer journey mapping or empathy mapping. Simple infographics that we can give to colleagues, a snapshot of what user needs are. Maybe we want to turn these into artwork. I've been around some of your offices in the past, and your walls are covered with important people shaking hands and impressive-looking buildings. It's all internal-looking. Your walls should be covered with citizens, with the people you're trying to reach. And empathy maps and customer journey mapping is a way of doing that. We need to start approaching projects differently, too. When we start working on a new service or a new pro uh, project, we need to make sure that, that those maps are ha on hand, those users, those citizens are in the front of our mind. Don't let a project begin with a feature list or some internal goal. Instead, always start with user needs. What is it that the user will get from this project? What need are you meeting? Don't make assumptions either. Speak to users. Find out if the, the need that you're building for is a real one. Even consider including them in the planning stage. This will make sure that the projects you work on are relevant to citizens' needs and are not just vanity projects for somebody in the organization. We need to start prioritizing the projects we work on based on user needs as well. Unfortunately, we, we've all got limited resources to work with. There's only so many projects we can take on, and projects that actually fundamentally help users often get sidelined in favor of some senior manager's pet project. And that has to change. So we have to stop prioritizing based on who shouts the loudest and work with colleagues and with management to agree a framework, a policy for prioritizing what we work on. A policy that's built around user needs, not eternal, internal agendas. We need to be focusing content creation around user needs as well. Content creation often suffers from a similar problem to projects. It starts from the premise of what do we want to say to the world, rather than what does the user want to know? And that has to change. When creating any content, we need to ask ourselves two fundamental questions. What does the user want to know about this subject, and what should they be doing next? But as we create content, we need to be careful of edge cases. Another issue with content creation is that we become caught up in complexity. We, we need to ensure clarity if we want to clearly communicate with users. One of the biggest problems with government in its various forms is it's not clear and transparent in a way that people can understand. And this is often a problem with edge cases, user groups that have maybe a slightly unusual need or a specialist user group that's unusual. Now, we don't have the luxury of ignoring these people, but we need to be careful that in our attempt to address their problems, we don't end up adding more complexity for the majority. So edge cases are something we need to pay a lot of attention to. We need to change the way we work as well. We need to build digital services around needs, but we also need to build them um, in a different way, in a new way. We can't run these projects in the same way as we've run projects in the past. Big technological rollouts or building a building. This is a fundamentally different thing if we want to be user-centric. Not if we want to include the user's voice in the process. 
we need to approach things differently. Instead of project specifications, we need to prototype. Prototypes that we can gather feedback from real users over. Prototypes that can then be improved and iterated on, instead of having these specifications that are set in stone and can never change. And we need to work hard to be cross-disciplinary teams. If we're going to work in this different way, then we can't continue to work in our silos. Because... Users don't think in terms of those silos. They don't care about our organizational structures. We can't carve up digital services between departments. Neither can we hand off users from one team to another. We need to start working collaboratively in, and forming cross-disciplinary teams. Because the customer experience, the user experience, the citizen experience spans the entire organization. And probably most of all, we need to get out of our website mindset. People of our generation, okay? People that maybe are getting a bit of white hair. We're obsessed with websites because that's what the majority of our digital career has been around. But when it comes to digital and digital democracy, it's about engagement. But a website is generally a broadcast mechanism, a broadcast platform. It doesn't allow us to listen or interact with users. Even something like a mobile app can't help with that. We need to use more user-centric channels and social channels because social channels enable a level of interaction. But that means a more significant investment. As investment in manpower and resources, resources to make these not just another broadcast channel where we push out press releases and news, but make them a customer service channel, a place that's for more than just announcements, a place where citizens can come and ask questions and get answers. But that's something that's got to be open 24-7 and have a global reach, so it will need investment. Finally, we need to become more user-centric as an organization. We need to redefine our own roles in order to achieve that. The trouble is, is we think it's our job, the people in this room, to deliver digital solutions, digital platforms, digital experiences. But do you know what your organization means more than anything else right now? It needs advocates. It needs people who are going to try and transform the organization that are going to become champions and mavericks. Because the truth is, even if you did the best job in the world, that's not going to create a great user experience because you can't do it on your own. Neither is having a good team behind you going to be enough. The entire organization will need to change. And it needs you to get passionate and enthusiastic and want to bring about transformation. And I want to help you do that. So in order to do that, I've put together a kind of set of resources to get you started. If you go to boag.world forward slash digitech, there's a whole load of stuff, including this presentation in video format and downloadable so you can, you can use it in other environments. It's got loads of further reading. And I really hope that you will grasp onto this, that you will become passionate and enthusiastic about bringing about change and becoming more citizen-centric. Thanks very much.